Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. That's a key point there. Darkness over the surface of the deep and that the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. The perspective of this creation narrative is from the Spirit of God who is hovering over the waters looking up at space, not from space looking down at the earth. And this plays a role into day four of creation when we get down to that point because... The sun, moon, and stars don't appear in the sky until day four, yet light was there since day one when God said, let there be light. So, verse three says, and God said, let there be light. There was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening, and there was morning. The first day. So the spirit who is hovering over the waters sees a light period and sees a dark period and he's able to distinguish between day and he's able to distinguish between nights. But note that it was dark over the surface of the deep and that it was water, predominantly water on the earth, and that it was dark. So when we look at Job, the book of Job, chapter 38, we see God speaking to Job and he's basically challenging Job. And saying, were you there when I laid the foundations of the earth? Right? Like, you hu human being, were you there, you know, a long time ago when I laid the foundations, when I separated the waters? And we can see in the bold part here of Job chapter 38, verses 8 and 9, it says, The Lord, the Lord says, Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from the womb? when I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness. So we can see here that the earth was water, and we can see here that it was dark because the earth was wrapped in cloud cover, making it dark. So that correlates with Genesis 1, when it was dark over the uh, surface of the deep. Now Psalm 104 is a psalm by David, and he writes about the creation he set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with a with the watery depths as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains, but at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder they took flight. They flowed over the mountains and went down into the valleys to the place you assigned for them. You set boundaries they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. Now this from an old earth perspective argues that it's talking about creation and not the flood 